that um, if these were all ideal constraints, meaning they were infinitely stiff along their axis and infinitely compliant in all directions, then the transmission ratio between the rotational input and the, the tra uh, sorry, the rotational input and the translational output would be, or, or sorry, if these were all ideal and I rotated this and got some output, if I took that displacement output, divided it by the rotation, that would be the pitch of this screw mechanism. And it wouldn't matter if I had this be the input and that's the output, or if I had this be the in input and that's the output, they would be the exact same transmission ratio, which would be the pitch of the screw. But that's idealized. In reality, flexors can stretch and compress along their axis, and they have finite compliance in the other direction. And so when you actually add reality material properties, topology, uh, you know, not just topology, but material properties and geometry, which is captured by these stiffness matrices, plug in here, you will find that um, if I make this the input rotation, you'll get some output transmission ratio that's close to the pitch of the screw, but not exactly. So it's a good starting place. And then you'll also find if I do the same translation, make that the input, the output will be different. It's not back drivable. Um, one will be KTW1, KTW1 here, and then two there. But then the other one, if you, if you back drive it, make this the input and that the output, and this is the input and that's the output, this will now, K1 won't even matter. You'll put in K3 here, and that's K2, and it'll be totally different because these are totally different flexures, right? Um, but, but it's still close to the pitch of the screw. It's just, um, it's not back drivable. It changes, and, it's, um, and, and, that's, and that's that. But so, so if you're ever designing these things, assume ideal constraints as we always do. Um, arrange the screw mechanism so that you get the transmissions you want using fact. Um, you'll be in the ballpark, you'll have a topology, then assign it material properties and, and geometry and tune that so you actually get the transmissions you want. And just be careful, don't ever turn your output into an input and your input into an output because it won't, it'll change the transmission uh, depending on which direction the energy is flowing in. So that's that. Um, this is also teaching you how to do a displacement uh, input and output. If you have actuators like voice coils that put forces on something. Say you have a magnet and you've got a coil around it and now that you drive uh, a current through it, it'll, it'll impart a force on it, not a displacement thing. Like a lead screw uh, does, is a displacement actuator, right? If you, if you drive a lead screw, you, you don't know what force it's pushing on it with, but you do know exactly how much is displaced depending on how much you rotate it because of the threading, right? So a lead screw, you control the displacement, not the force. Um, but with a voice coil where you drive a current through it and, and push a magnet, you, you don't know how much it displaces depending on what, what flexors are stuck to that magnet, but you do know how much force you put on it. So if you wanted to do force input, you'd put a wrench here and you, you'd have to re-solve this. You, you'd have to configure this as like, let's put a force on there. What's the force output? And that would be geometric advantage. And you have to go through, it's, it's definitely not this equation. You'd have to go through free body diagrams and calculate for a force on here, what's the force uh, you know, output there, um, and vice versa. And you could do that. And then whatever the, the stiffness major thing is, you configure that and put wrench input, wrench output, and now you can get the geometric advantage. Okay? So that is that. That's the transmission, how to calculate these things. Very useful uh, lecture. And stay tuned for the next one.